Have you ever had the thought that if you want something done right, it's got to be done by me, right? No one else can do what I do. Maybe you have this thoughts of how you want to expand your business, but how are you going to do that? Because you do it best. No one else does it like you, right? My name is Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design, and today's video is why micromanaging can cost you your entire business. And I've been working with a lot of clients around micromanaging and they've had these insights of where they wanna grow, they wanna scale, right? Because the, the goal of a business is to expand, to grow, to scale. Well, you can't do that if it's just you. You only have so much time, you only have so much energy, you only have so much resources. You can't do it all. And I see business owners, they wanna grow, but they think they can't because it's based on them. And what's gonna happen is you're not gonna be able to get as far as you wanna get. You're gonna hit a ceiling. You're gonna hit this wall where you just, you're gonna turn your wheels and you can't get past. So the only way to expand, the only way to scale, the only way to make more money is by leveraging other people. But that brings in another twist because most of us aren't used to letting other people do things for us, right? Because when we think about you know, getting things done, we hold this belief Oh, got to turn things off. We hold this belief that, <clears throat> you know, you're the only one can do it. Um, the biggest limiting belief I hear is no one can do it as good as me, right? I hear that all the time. I say, well, why can't you let someone else do it? Well, no one does it as good as me, right? How many times or in what areas of your life do you have that? Not just in business, but right in life. Like, no, no one can clean my house as good as me. No one can cook as good as me. No one can do my bills and finances and, and financial planning as good as me. Where does that belief, that limiting belief, stop you from having a better quality life? What if instead of adopting that no one can do it as good as you, you adopted the belief that people can do it even better than you because they're a master in that one thing? And you get masters of those areas where you need to leverage. See, it's the belief, the psychology that I work with around with clients that allows them to be set free, that takes the weight off their shoulders and gives them the freedom that they need and the ability to scale and to grow, right? So, all right, a couple things. When you think about micromanaging, right, what do we think about? We think about how the... It, well, what do you feel? Let me say it like that. What do you feel when you think micromanaging? Have you ever been micromanaged? Maybe as a kid, your parents were always on you on your homework. How did that feel? Did that feel so free and comforting? Or did it feel restrictive and, and painful and challenging? <clears throat> we all had those moments in our life where we've been micromanaged. And so if you're going to take that leap of faith, you're going to, to be able to scale and to bring people in and to leverage you can't micromanage. You're gonna make your team, your people feel restrictive. You're gonna make them feel restrained. You're gonna make them feel like a kid again. No one wants to feel like a kid. No adult wants to feel like, be treated like a kid. They may want their inner child to come out. <laughs> That's a totally different topic, but they don't want to become micromanaged like a kid. And that in itself kills a culture. If you're constantly overlooking someone's shoulder, correcting them, doing this, why did you do this? Why did you do that? When you micromanage people, you kill the, the camaraderie. You kill the culture. No one wants to work for you. Now, they may stay working for you because they need the money, but no one's going to really put, go above and beyond. right? No one does that. Because our again, the goal of a business is to grow and expand and add value. But if you're micromanaging, no one's going to go above and beyond and create the value within your clients, your customers, or even your service that's going to allow you to expand. So as an entrepreneur, if you're going to expand, you got to change your psychology. you got to allow people, and this is the key, is instead of checking in with people, you want to have them reach out. <clears throat> now, what does that mean? Uh, I got this concept by Keith Cunningham and I thought it was brilliant because how many times do we always check in, you know, hey, how's this going, right? What is that signal to that employee, to that individual, that contractor? You don't trust them, right? And so you're constantly having to check in on their work versus delegating it and having them report out of what's going on. And that doesn't mean they come to you and tell you. 
So one of the best ways of reporting out is you can have a CRM or you can have an Excel spreadsheet of what needs to get done and by when, right? That's part of the delegation process. We'll get into that later at another video. But you wanna give them certain steps when it comes to giving them what their assignment is. But then they can have an Excel spreadsheet where they tell you, where they write in there what's going on or a Google Doc and what, where they're at in the process. And they can update that by whatever frequency you want, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, it really depends on what you're measuring <clears throat> because you can't manage what you don't measure. And so that gives them the freedom to be able to do their thing, to do their specialty, to add massive value without feeling micromanaged. I remember when I went to get my master's degree in performance psychology, uh, there is one theory that stuck out and it was the self-determination theory. It just stuck out to me. I don't know why. And I think it was because in my, uh, that time in my life, I was doing some things and I felt really micromanaged. And I was very much micromanaged as a child and in the Marine Corps. And I remember it stuck out to me. <clears throat> and so the self-determination theory suggests that people are motivated to grow and change by three innate and universal psychology, uh, psychological needs. And this theory suggests that people are able to become self-determined when their need for competence, connection, and autonomy are fulfilled. Some say relatedness, right? So depending on what you're reading, it could be relatedness instead of connection. But autonomy are fulfilled. And so autonomy, we all want that feeling. And I thought it fit perfect here because like we all have that feeling, we want autonomy. Like this is my job, this is what I'm good at or I'm a master at. I don't need you over my shoulder. Yeah, you might be good at it, but I'm effing great at it. Leave me alone, let me do what I do. If I have questions and you create the safe space for me to come ask or for coaching, then I will. But if not, let me do my job. And it's so, if someone's a master, you're not gonna check in. Right, like Phil Jackson doesn't check in on Michael Jordan in the off season and say, hey Michael, are you practicing? Are you conditioning? Are you shooting? Are you, you know, no, Michael's a master. He's doing that without his coach telling him, right? But Phil can get an update, right? He might get an update where Michael might shoot him a text. It's not him checking in, it's him just reaching, uh, reaching out. Now I'm using a spreadsheet, we're talking about an entrepreneurial world, a company, right? Maybe you have a team of one or two, or maybe you have a team of 2,000, it doesn't matter, but you can reach out and say, here's where I'm at. That's the difference. I have the autonomy to reach out and let you know where I'm at, where the project's at, or where the process is at, instead of me checking in <clears throat> and making me feel like I'm a little kid again, right? People feel free, they feel connected. And there is a survey done, a study done in a company and all the managers were asked, um, what do you think the employees would rate everything of importance? And they, the manager said, economics. Economics is a number one driver and it's not. When they give it to the employees, um, feeling needed or wanted or special within the organization was number one. And actually economics was number five. So it's like, we think we know what's best, but sometimes it's not always what's best. So if you're going to grow your business, if you're gonna expand, you can't have a culture where you're micromanaging people because you're gonna kill the autonomy, you're gonna kill the relatedness, no one's gonna feel like you trust them, you're gonna kill their competence. Even though they know this, they're gonna be like, gosh, he doesn't trust me, am I doing something wrong? <clears throat> And so all of a sudden their motivation drops and now we're not producing above and beyond expectations. And we could talk about bringing the A plus players into your organization, but that's a whole nother conversation. But if you micromanage, your culture's going to draw, die. The motivation within your team or your staff is going to die. The ability to go above and beyond an MS of value and create raving fans is going to die. And when that does, it can cost you an entire business. Now that doesn't mean you'll go out of business. It just means you won't be where you think you should be. And then guess what's gonna happen? Your own limiting beliefs will come back up. It'll resurface. <clears throat> We're not producing. I hired these people. We're not hitting the numbers I thought. Why not? It must be this person I brought in or these people. Let me see. Check in, check in. You know, micromanage, micromanage, micromanage. And guess what happens? They're like, uh. And then all of a sudden you go back into your old habits and it's inevitable before. They're like, you know what? Screw this. I'd rather go on an unemployment than work with you. 
or I'm done here. I'm going to get another position. I'm going to go get another contract with someone else. Right? So this micromanagement can kill your entire business. Remember, micromanaging is making a, you feel restrictive, like a child again. If you want to be able to expand and grow, you got to have that. Your, your team has to have that autonomy. And how you do that is going from check-ins to check-out. And I also had a client the other day as we wrap up here. <clears throat> They would use a CRM where you know they would have him read every task that wasn't started and said did not start. And it's red. And what they did was they changed it to green and said ready to be started. And all of a sudden productivity shot through the roof, right? And so instead of them feeling micromanaged, like, oh, go do this one, go do that one, it was like, oh, they had the autonomy to be like, oh, it's green. It changed the way they thought about it. Let's go get started on it. That was the autonomy. And then that's that self-determination theory kicking in for them. I thought it was so cool. And I wanted to share with you guys because that's a practical application from a client growing his company, right? We, you know, he hit his goal, you know, it's in the infancy stage, but they hit the goal of over $50,000 in a month. And now they're going to go to a hundred thousand dollars a month and we'll get them past a quarter million over time. So it's, it all connects. And so maybe you're one of those people that are like, you know, I have I, I don't have a big company, but I have a team of like two or three people and I'm micromanaging them. I could see the culture sucks and no matter if I give them more money, it's not working. And it's like, well, no shit, because they don't care about the money. What they care about is feeling included, special, wanted in that process. That's most in the, at least from this one survey. Now you might have a high economic or a couple people who are high economics. Know your people, know them. What motivates them? And micromanaging can cost you the entire business. If they leave, you're going back to your old ways. And that's not the point of a business. A business is to add massive value and you wanna expand and grow that to many people out there in the marketplace. So maybe you're feeling challenged. Maybe you're feeling stuck there. Maybe you're feeling like, man, I just can't get it right. Something's there. I just don't know what it is. Well, then maybe you need to reach out and fill out the coaching application page in the comments below or in the description below. Let us work with you. Come in. We'll come in. We'll take a look. Where are you in your business? What's going wrong? What's the key obstacles that are getting you from where you are to where you want to go? What's preventing that? And when we can identify that, we can create systems, tools, strategies, tactics, psychology to be able to break through, right? And that's the power of coaching. The greatest people like Michael Jordan, they still have a coach. They have a coach outside of their coach, right? And so are you investing in you? So with that, I know you found value in this video. Give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your comments below. Most importantly, subscribe. Hit that little notification button next to it so that you can be notified when these videos come out because we're dropping these videos every week for you and adding as much value as we possibly can. So let me know, comment below, like, share, subscribe, whatever you need to do. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. And with that, my name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See you guys.